stream right now. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting a sound from it right now. And is there, is it, can, oh. is there like a chat I can type in? Nope. Into? Nope. It was my fault. How's this? You should be getting the sound now. All right, let me refresh. Yeah, you got to refresh. I think you should be getting the sound now. Oh, my God. There's so many details. I can't yeah, believe I'm I looking, I, I Go on. No, it's all right. I, I, I've done a stream. I don't know if it's like a, a, a layer or something you need to do. No. Or something like that. Like on, I don't know. Are, like, no, no. I know what to do. I need to uh, unmute my microphone. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> <laughs> Oh Son of God. a bitch. I'm getting closer though. Oh, so cool. I'm getting closer though. Yeah. So tell me. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about why you're calling. Was it just for that? Is... No, I'm, I'm calling because I want to uh, start growing. And I, I, um, I just met some people who are all into it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start harvesting my own stuff. I grew a plant before, but I. I I didn't have feminized seeds. What I did is I just kind of threw some really like tiger striped seeds on the ground and I, I got some vitamins and I started like growing and I, and I got a really beautiful like five foot five plant with a couple of buds. I'd say it was about maybe 50 or 100 grams. It was really cool. And uh, that's, that's kind of, I, I, I started looking through YouTube. I found, I found you, I subscribed. And now I'm trying to uh, <coughs> uh, get a, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find out how to pop I'm trying to find out like pinching and I'm just, I'm really trying to, I'm, I'm going to do it again. I'm already in the process of getting the seeds and I want to get like at least maybe a good 140 grams off of my first, uh, my first attempt. I just, I, 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 I'm trying to go, I, I, I want to avoid as many mistakes as possible for my first so I can prove. I understand. And, and I see that you have a, that you have a um, yield that you're looking for, which is a smart way to start. Uh, usually what I suggest like the lowest yield is, is about 220 grams, about a half a pound. And that comes from a four foot eight bulb T5. So let me ask you, are you doing this indoors or outdoors? I'm planning, I'm planning on doing it indoors. Okay, so you're, do you have a light or you're planning on buying a light? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do everything custom right now because everything is just like, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a lot right now so i was like you know what i'm gonna get everything custom and like i'm gonna i'm gonna be do it yourself type of thing okay so i'll, I'll tell you probably can, cannabis responds poorly to do it yourself because you tend to do too much so when you say you're going to do something custom i, I don't i don't know how to help you because mm -hmm. i don't know what you're going to do for instance if you were to tell me i am going to get a four foot eight bulb t5 well then i tell you if you just had one light you're probably going to have six plants. You're probably going to veg for three or four weeks and then flower for eight, and you'll get about a half pound in 90 days. But that's what that light. So when you say a custom light, I, I don't, how could I, I don't know how to work with that because I, I don't know what it is. So tell me what a custom light is. Oh, no, 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 that sounds, that what you just said sounded cool. You're telling me I can get a yield in about 90 days? Okay, so think about yield. The relationship with yield is yields based on light. The more light you have, the more yield you have. The second component to yield is frequency. For instance, if you have one light, you have to veg, then flower. So you're into this for 30 days plus 60 days, so you're into this for 90 days. So you're going to get one harvest every 90 days when you have one light. Now, if you have two lights, you veg and harvest at the same time. When you veg and harvest at the same time, as soon as flower is done, you walk over to veg, you take plants out, you put them in the flower tent, take cuttings, put them back in veg, and start again. So when you have two lights, you get a harvest every 60 days. If you have three lights, you get a harvest every 30 days because you stagger the two flower lights. So there's two components to this. One is you want 140 grams. Okay, so let's say 200, 140 grams, you did 60 days. Let's say we do 220 grams, 90 days. That's 80 grams every 30 days. So that's 160 grams, you wanted 140, which you're right in the zone. So one light, you would veg, then flower, and you would get that yield that you're looking for, but you'd get it in 90 days. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, 
if you want. Yeah. If, uh, okay. So, w what is your suggestion for um, if I was in a but I have a very very low budget. I say it's pretty low. You want to hear it? Yeah. Probably like three bills. Oh, dude, you're in. I'm good. Three bills is just fine. Okay, here's what you do. You you look on. You have Cra you have Craigslist, right? I do. Okay. I'm looking on it right now as we speak. Okay, so here's what you're gonna search for. Got you're it. gonna you're gonna search for four foot. You know, you'll search for T5, but you're gonna buy a four foot eight bulb T5. One four foot eight bulb T5. If you can find a twelve bulb or a sixteen bulb, that's fine too. But what you're looking for is a four foot eight bulb T5. With a four foot eight bulb T5, you're golden, and it doesn't just have to be Craigslist. You can call around to your local hydro stores and see if they've got something lying around. Because a lot of times. Um, they'll have a whole bunch of them. Someone will come in and upgrade or someone will come in and give up and sell them all back So you can get them pretty cheap. They run about 200 somewhere a little more a little less They run about $200 new. So if you give me a $300 budget. There's 200 new. Let's say 150 used you Got 150 used you need one bottle of bloom one bottle of cow mag one bottle of microbes a bag of soil and a bucket four buckets you need one bag of soil you're probably gonna finish in three gallon buckets. So buy one bag of happy frog because that's two cubic feet. So ocean forest is one, one and a half cubic feet. Happy frog is two cubic feet. It's 33% more. So you get about 12 gallons from a bag of happy frog. Happy frogs, 20 bucks. Cal mag is 20 bucks. Bottle of bloom is 20 bucks. Bottle of microbes for great white is, I think they're 15 bucks, 14 bucks for the small one. So we're at 20, 40, 60, 75 dollars. 150 on the light, 225, 20 on the soil, 245. The buckets are 10 bucks, 255. That leaves you just enough for a Grow Boss Mega Meter. Oh, it's out of the frame. That was so dramatic. So that leaves you just. God. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, gonna rewatch this. Um, okay, okay. So I look for T5. How, like is, is it just a T and a five, or, yes. or how would I spell that out? I'm looking under um farm and garden right now. Okay, so let me popping out. Let me get there with you. I'll show I'm in you. Houston. Okay, control. Oh, so I want this. Let's see, um, this one and it's this. So here we are. Let me open up a tab and we'll do Craigslist. So here in Craigslist, all I'm searching for is T5, and then it says T5 in for sale, 65. We'll just go straight T5 and see where that starts us. There's one right there. So T5, we'll type in light and refine our search a little bit. I could probably just type in cannabis. I'm pretty good at this because, uh, because we delete all the other stores and all the other ads up there and then we try to buy the stuff used so i'll like delete everybody's shit or I'll, you know register it as prohibited and then i'll go in oh there's one of my ads then i'll go in and then uh i'll call them up and i'll or i'll tell them, hey i'm the hydro store i'll buy this shit cheap okay sale t5 and t8 lights now t8 lights are not the same thing so we want only the t5 lights here's a single four foot single light fluorescent now there's a difference in these things between two and four feet a two foot bulb is 24 watts, 2000 lumens. So let me, it's a nice little spot to do some math. Cause this is, uh, this is one of those things where like suddenly you buy the wrong equipment and you didn't know it. So if you have a 24 inch T5, this equals 24 watts and 2000 lumens. If you buy a 48 inch T5, this is 54 watts and 5,000 lumens. The thing is, you're getting, right, this is 2.5 times more. For twice the electricity, you're getting two and a half times the light. So when I suggest that you buy the four foot version, I'm serious when I tell you because that's that's like the most light you're going to get for that money. So you're going to want a four foot, eight bulb T5. You could do more, but there's no need because at a half pound every nine, a half pound every ninety days, that's your eighty grams a month average that you were looking for. So 
I'm just saying that you're looking for the four foot eight bulb T5. And when we, uh, when we, okay, I, I found something. It's a, uh, it's, I believe it's a one, two, three, four, five, six bolt. It says we have a six lamp T5 high bay fluorescent light with a 10 foot cord for sale. And they have, they have several of them. We have 24 left and 30 brand, still brand new in the box. Once the yellow film is removed, we will have the mirror finished and behind the lights. Please call to schedule time and come and buy them. Okay, how much is it? What do you think? How much, I think how much is it? It's like 60 bucks. 60, oh, 70 bucks. I would think you're going to buy two, and I'll show you why. I put a picture up on the screen. Can you see it? I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to. While you do that, I'm going to smoke. Oh. Yay. Uh, oh, man. Okay. You see these plants? Okay. So this is what I tell you guys about these plants. This are These are two T5 six-bulb, four-foot lights <clears throat> at 54 watts each each of these lights is about 300 watts each of these lights is about 300 watts there are five plants under each light each light each plant can then technically grow 60 watts big see if you have 300 watts worth of light i don't care if you grow five 60 watt plants 30 10 watt plants or 250 watt plants the only thing we're talking about is how long you veg for because if you veg them six weeks you can't grow 10 plants 150 watts big with a 300 watt light you can grow two plants 150 watts big so i'm trying to give you a little bit of scope here but the most important thing that i'm trying right. to give you in scope is that this is the end of week five veg in this particular case i'll show you this is week one this is the first lights week one, the next lights week two, the next lights week three, the next two lights are week three. Notice that instead of there being 10 lights under each, 10 plants under each light, there's five plants under those last two. And that's because you can't grow 10 plants under a 200 watt light, 30 watts big. You can only grow them 20 watts big. So in lights three and four in this picture, what the person has done is they've halved the plant counts. If you can grow 10 20 watt plants, under a 200 watt light 20 watts big then you can grow five plants under a 200 watt light 40 watts big and that's an important idea to grasp because you're not going to have this many plants nor are you going to veg this long it's going to be one or the other for instance let's say you do five plants like in this picture you're going to start flowering at week after two weeks of veg and the reason is this is week five, end of week four so this is week five if you start flowering now, you got eight more weeks to go. You won't have enough light. So if you're going to do a small light, like a 400 watt, you're not going to veg this big, or you're only going to veg two plants this big and then start flowering them because this is six lights. And if you look at these plants, you'll notice at the bottom, that you could strip off about eight inches and you could probably pluck some from the top. So I use these plants as an example to show you that if you can grow five plants, 60 watts big, under a 300 watt light, then if you were to strip off the bottom 20 watts and you were to pluck 10 watts off the top and 10 watts out of the middle, so all you were left with was that perfect little bush, you would have removed 40 watts. So what I tell you guys is this plant is about 85 watts big. If you were to strip 35 watts from it, this plant would be 50 watts big. If this plant is 50 watts big, it could stay under this light another week. I just want you guys to understand that no one week is any more important than any other, but always veg them too big, because if you don't veg them big enough, where are you gonna put the buds? So in this case, let's take, uh, let's take for you a, a two week veg and an eight week flower for 10 weeks total. This is an example of what a couple of plants look like at we, after five weeks of veg you're going to want two plants like this at the end of uh, or you're going to probably want six plants a little smaller than this you're probably going to want them to look like these in the last two rows here then you're going to start flowering because if he's got five plants under 200 watts and you've got two six bulbs that's 600 watts you still have eight weeks to go to flower 
So in your mind, this is just like driving a car. We're shifting gears. You can't go from first to fifth. You can't start in third. It doesn't work like that. So you're going to grow, let's say, five plants um, just about as big as this third light and the third and fourth light in this picture. You're going to top them, strip the bottoms, and you're going to start to flower them. Now, if I'm right, this is week two, let's say. Um, this is, oh, that's end of week three. Okay, so end of week three, you would top them, strip the bottoms, they would stay under this light for one more week because if you shrunk the plant, it can stay under the light just a little longer. And then you have, you start flowering and then you have eight more weeks. Okay, seven more weeks. If you have 12 bulbs and this is four bulbs, eight more weeks is a bulb a week. That's 50 watts a week. That's 10 watts a plant. If you look at this picture here, you can see these plants grow about 10 watts a week because there's so many. You can grow about 35 watts a week in cannabis. I mean, in soil, in media. You can grow 50 watts a week in hydro. But you're not, that's not your game. Your game is to finish with as few problems as, as possible. So what I would suggest is that if this is a four week veg and an eight week flower and you have 12 bulbs, then you should probably be growing four plants or five plants in one gallon buckets like in this picture you'll start with one bulb and you'll add a bulb a week so you'll have 12 gears in your cycle now don't light up one bulb because in t5s they like it when you light up two bulbs so t5s get two bulbs at a time so rather than put one bulb this close you just put two bulbs that far away from your plant but that's the idea. Think about this in terms of weeks and the length of the project. If this is a 12 week project and you don't want to be at 100% light until week four flower because of a thousand watt light, I mean, in this case of a 400 watt light is meant for a space two by four, two feet deep, then you need two by four, 18 inches deep because you can't give 400 watts worth of light to 200 watts worth of plant. You can't go from first to third, you can't go from second to fifth. I'm just suggesting that there's this natural progression so that as the plant gets bigger, it only wants a little more light and then it'll get a little bigger and then you'll give it a little more light. It's not like putting a thousand watt light over a little tiny plant is gonna turn it into a thousand watt plant. I mean, a thousand watt plant takes 10 weeks to veg. So you won't be at 1,000 watts until week nine of veg. You'll be at 800 in week eight, you'll be at 700 in week seven. You see what I'm saying? You can't, you can't give it more light before it's ready for it. See what I mean? Yeah. So in this case- Okay, so- Go on. What's that, what's that with that neuron? I'm, I'm absorbing everything. I'm absorbing everything you're saying. Yes, that's why. So let's go here to the internet. So we're gonna look at T5 light. This one, is the two foot four bulb. Four bulbs at 24 watts each, like we did over here. Four bulbs at 24 watts would be one would be 2,000 lumens per bulb. You would be at 8,000 lumens total. That's, if you had the same four foot, you'd be at 20,000 lumens. So you're not looking to do, you're not looking to do two footers. They're nice, but you could see that if this is a 12 bulb, four foot, 12 bulb, four foot bulb with one bulb per week process, what would you grow with two foot bulbs even if you had 12 of them? It wouldn't work. Uh, uh, an advanced platinum series LED P600, 600 watt, 12 band. Let's take a look. Let's see what we can get this on eBay for. 620, now, so- I'm seeing the shipping. LED one for 400. Um, okay, so this is, yeah, so he's got it over here on my Craigslist, got it for 600 watts for 400. This guy, they've got him for 675 with shipping on eBay. So here's a LED on Craigslist, just, that's pretty cheap. I wouldn't even, even at 400 bucks, I would not buy that used at my store. I'd be lucky to sell that for 400 bucks. Um, yeah, some ballasts on Craigslist. Ah, oh, that's one of my ads there. See, on Craigslist, I have these ads. Free meter calibration. That way I get you in my store. I can sell you one of my meters. <sighs> Watch this. Check this out. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, what's that? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it. On air, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's like shooting paintballs at people at bus stops. Okay, okay. I have a question. What if it is not LED? 
oh yeah, you're not buying LEDs. You're only going to buy a T5 in your world. I tell you guys that LEDs have a 100% failure rate. Not the equipment. I mean, Pine makes a fantastic LED. I think in five years I had one returned, and even that was suspicious from the customer. They make a fantastic product, but you'll never use an LED. They have a 100% failure rate, and you, sir, are already in the danger zone of failing because you're a do-it-yourself builder. And if you read my books, I tell you guys, man, the builders are always, uh, always have the highest failure rate because you do too much. This is a plant. It's a 12-week process. There is nothing for you to do in 12 weeks. You set it, and that's right, because there's nothing to be done. More nutrients aren't going to get you more yield, more light. I mean, <clears throat> adding more light too early is not going to get you more yield. Watering a little bit every day is not going to get you more yield. The only thing that's going to get you more yield is fewer problems. And that's the goal of really what I try to help you guys do. You don't need to learn how the plant needs to grow. The plant already knows how to grow. All you need to know how to do is get out of its way. And I will tell you that if you change your mind twice during this process, you've already mutchied the plant too much. If you're in there more than once or twice a week, those are the things that cause failure. There's nothing to do. You gotta come back at the end of the week and be all like, oh shit, look how big they've gotten. There's nothing to be done. There's no mutchy. This is a 12 week process and there is absolutely nothing you can do to speed up that process. Okay, okay. Um, now, from what I understood is that if I have, let's just say, obviously I'm gonna be growing them indoors, now I'm gonna have these lights hanging down, right? Yeah. So I have to keep topping and topping so the buds will grow and it'll stay under the light and then that's, that's gonna be part of the process until it starts flowering? Yes, and what you're going to be looking for is, um, okay, you don't, I don't want you to say the word topping and topping because it sounds like you're doing too much already. What, uh, what you will have to do is you will have to top the plants. You will have to top and super crop. Now, I'll tell you guys that one of the big things that uh, one of the big things that you guys always get in trouble for is is you top too often. You, it, it, listen, you're only going to be in there once a week, so you can't top more than once a week. The plant just doesn't grow that fast. I'd also like to be clear that anybody says they're low stress training. Anybody that comes in my store that says they're low stress training is always overwatering and their plants have that natural bean stalk. They don't bush out. So what I've done in this video, topping, lollipopping, and super cropping, is I've taken a plant that's obviously too close to the light. And by and you can see this plant has been topped a couple of times. But this plant's pro, this plant's probably 10 weeks old and has only been lollipop, lollipop, and super cropped two or three times maybe like when we went from a one to a three like when we went from a three to a whatever this is in like we don't there really isn't a need to top very often because you can see a plant doesn't grow that fast so the question is why are you topping it all the time you could literally follow the Bushmaster, the 99 plant series and he tops every four or six weeks and those plants came out like i mean they're huge and the canopy is dead even so here you look at this plant and then you watch me take this plant and see it's touching the light. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird watching me watch myself talking about myself. But look at how look at how flexible this plant is. So I take one plant, I lean it all the way down. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at this point, you could see that if it was just even, the, the all the branches would turn up and you'd be in the zone. And like literally over the next few minutes, I just go over how to take that plant and weave it into a trellis. And I just want to be clear, like this, this is one plant in that trellis. That's why I tell you the longer the veg, the fewer the plants, because um, the final product of this was one plant in that whole trellis. Now that's your goal, yes. Except you might do it with two plants or you might do it with four plants because in your case you're looking to have a shorter veg see when you have a when you have uh when you have one light it's veg plus flower so you have the longest time between harvests but when you have two lights you're going to get a harvest every eight weeks because you're vegging and harvesting simultaneously 
but you also know that your veg is eight weeks along with your flower. But when you have one light, you don't want to veg for eight weeks, then flower. You want to veg for two weeks. So instead of two plants vegged for four weeks, you would do four plants vegged for two weeks. Maybe you do it five. But you see what I'm saying? You would want more plants and a shorter veg. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Ve four plants veg for two weeks. Instead right. of instead of two plants veg for four weeks. Right. Instead. Aha, uh -huh, no taking notes. See, you would you would flower the plants in row three in this picture. You would want them earlier because of the limited light. That's why I was suggesting you might want two of those T5s. Now, it will get you twice the... It, okay. well, it'll get you 50% more yield than one T8. Why? Because 12 bulbs is 50% more than eight bulbs. So you'll get 50% more yield, but you don't have to turn them on. But as long as you're there, you might as well. But if you can get those six bulbs, uh, you could go buy two six bulbs. It is a little more difficult to hang. When you have when you have an eight bulb, you can just hang it right from a closet rack. I mean, you're only gonna finish plants like like I show you in like I showed you in that video. They're gonna be, you know, three feet tall, the light will be five feet high, two feet away by the time you finish. So I think that's sort of the relationship that you're going for. Okay, there's an um now uh, another thing I want to know: What does pinching help you help you with? Okay, there's two components to topping. I have a side fan, so I have to time my hit so the fan doesn't blow out the lighter. There's two components to topping: one is cloning, one is pinching. <clears throat> now you can pinch the entire top of the plant off so the lower branches branch out. You can also fim it and just take the middle out and that that doesn't physically lower the plant see if you pinch the top and you take the whole top off so the branches down here have to grow out then you're physically lowering the plant instead of pinching the top you could have just as easily taken a clone so you've got the plant it comes up sides come out there's got a top when you pinch the top you're left with a stalk till down to the next node where the next two branches come out if you pinch the top, that stalk won't grow. The next two nodes will come out. So you could have taken a clone even if you threw it away. There was no need to leave the stalk. However, if you take that same top and you just fim it, the plant will not be any lower. The top will still be the top. It won't be as much of the top because there's a chemical in the top that tells the plant that this is the apex bud. And you'll remove a lot of that chemical when you fim it because it won't continue to grow top. It won't continue to grow vertical. However, you will not have physically lowered the plant by the height of that clone down to the next two branches. So if you pull out, if you pull out the center of the top and you grow two branches from there, these two branches will grow, these two branches will grow, but the plant will not be any lower. So if you need to lower the plant to bush it out, you would do what's called topping. You could pinch it. You could take the entire clone from the top and do it like that. Otherwise, you would fim it and you would keep the branches, all the lower branches. So one physically lowers the plant. The other one makes more branches, but does not physically lower it. Okay, so what you're saying is if I pinch on the top, without topping it's gonna it's gonna make the two the two bottom lower uh, branches grow out longer instead of uh actually topping the top and cloning fimming i'm going to assume in your case that fimming meant that you were going to take i'm sorry that topping meant you were going to take the entire top now you can take the entire top and then and then leave the stalk so technically it goes top stalk next two nodes if you take the top, you've left the stalk. If you take the stalk on the top, essentially you have a clone. Either way, the plant has to start growing six inches lower. So you physically lowered the plant. And it doesn't matter, it's the same theory with a side branch. If you physically take the top as a clone, it's lower. That's the difference. Okay, and now by cloned, um, I, I may be wrong, but from what I think clone is, is when you, um, 
cut from the root or I will now I, now I know that there's clones on top too. So if you cut from the root and then let the root grow, I mean, from right above the root, let the root grow again and then plant the top part again. No. That, is, that, is that considered cloning or is that like a standard method or what? No, that would be no. like, that would be like, I, no, you can't just take a seedling. See, a clone is just a part of the branch, and that's going to be a little bit much for this show to take some clones. Um, oh, you know what? I will, I will, let me see. I will show you, um, I will give you, I will show you a sneak preview of exactly the question that you just asked me for because I'm putting together a video with the Bushmaster and... Okay, so the Bushmaster is taking clones. This is, uh, this is the, the whole process. He starts with the Clone X. He sprayed a week before. He builds the Turbo Cloner. And now we're into taking a clone. So, I mean, there's a million views. There's a million videos on this on YouTube. But look at that. Oh, shit. He just snapped that branch right off. He's cutting the lower leaves right off of it. Oh, and he drops it in the cup and goes on. So here he is with a little closer shot. He cuts off a branch. He's gonna trim it up a little. And bam, that is a nice fucking clone. That's why when you said you cut the part above the roots, no. Because if you cut the part above the roots, you would take this whole plant down. No oh, crap, okay. <laughs> See that, that's a clone. Now that's a big ass clone. You don't usually put a clone that big with a couple of nodes in it like that. Um, into like uh, soil or something. You would have to put that into like a Root Riot starter plug or a turbo clone. Oh, here, here I'll show you. Like, there just comes this point where like uh, gratuitously, okay, so you put you make the mix. So <laughs> you have to take all these clones, then you put them in Clonex gel. <coughs> God. You know, the secret about Clonex gel is, is if you have a sick, shitty cutting or you didn't do it right, there is no rooting powder or rooting gel that's going to help. What Clonex gel does is it accelerates a natural process. So if you have a healthy clone, ah, this will cause explosive root growth where you just would have got moderate root growth. And what you're always looking for is like, you get those roots out of the bottom and you'll cut the bottom and the roots will get bushy and you'll wait another week and you'll cut the bottom and the roots will get bushy the exact opposite way of a plant that gets bushy. You bottom the roots just like you top a plant. So this is the Bushmaster just uh, loading up this turbo cloner. But yeah, I mean, I, I tell you guys, don't make this any more complicated than it need be. This, if a lightning hit a cannabis plant out in the middle of a grow, the branch would fall on the ground. It would root. The plant would stand back up doesn't need any help from you. I mean, it's a fucking weed. The more you do, the less you get. And I, I'm going to end this call, and I do appreciate it. And um, um, and give me one second. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can. With your address. And then um, uh, I'll hook you up with a couple of things for the most excellent phone call. But... um. I just want to caution you that the biggest probability of failure is that uh, when you're a builder is that you're going to do too much because when you do too much the cannabis plants can't handle it like when you see the rest of this video with the Bushmaster you're gonna it's all stop motion there's he changes the water once he shows you how the roots develop but it isn't anything more than that there's nothing to be done you can't make the roots grow any faster all right, it's 9.40. I, I, I screwed the pooch a little in, in the start because I had my mic off. I can tell you one more call, but before I actually take that call, I wanted to uh, show you guys. So last week I had mentioned, okay, so I write the grow book and equipment guy. I own a hydro store in Henderson, Nevada. And one of the things that I do is I help people start growing. And I don't even need to teach you how to grow. It's like a trick I do. All I need to do is teach you how to avoid failure. So what I've done is I've taken all of the problems growers have and I put them on these 90 count fat cards. Like I already know every problem you're gonna have. I've got the troubleshooting guy. Um, what's the difference between grow and flower nutrients? Something you need to know. 
Um, question, how much air should I bubble into the res? That's actually a trick question. In most cases, you're never gonna bubble air into the res, and that card tells you why, and the problems of what's gonna happen. So these are my no more, grow more fat cards. There's 90 of them in there. Because if you can just avoid failure, you'll have some degree of success. And then you do it a couple of times and you get better. It's just like anything else. So, one of the things that I had went over with you guys last week was, this is the cover of one of my magazines. It's called Gardens and Grow Rooms. <clears throat> and in it are a bunch of examples of ways to grow and shopping lists of stuff to buy, suggested videos that you guys could look at. And then, um, I also have like builds and electrical panels so you can see how the equipment should be set up. And if you want to see if I can get one more phone call in, the number is 84, 84 Grow Boss, give me a call. But here you go. And I had said that if you know why I put this picture on the cover, that I would uh, send you a free package. And I have one guy, Ben. I got two guys that tried. One guy actually worked it out. They actually had to send me two or three emails as they narrowed it in. But I made a video specifically about this type of a garden. And I was wondering if any of you guys could figure out this week and next week I'll tell you what the answer is. But I wanted to know if anybody this week could figure out what I'm going for when I show you this garden on the cover. And I'm not gonna give you a clue because other than the watch it has to do with one of my videos, but you know, it's something really to think about because this is, uh, I'm about to give you a clue, so I, I'm just gonna step away from it. Anyway, that was the challenge, and I Ben got it, and I sent out a couple of shirts and some lighters and the vendors, because they all send me so much stuff. And this is my 20 week garden tracker, and it has week by week everything you need to track. And it's got suggestions on one side for what you should be doing, like here's Clonex, and the last guy's question about topping and super cropping, there it is. And that's what I was, I wanted to get back into that because, uh, because I had mentioned that last week and a couple of people seemed super interested. Oh man, I just missed the call. Okay, so the number is 84 Grow Boss. This is Cannabis Hotline. If you have any questions or you want to talk medical or you have problems that you'd like to associate with your medical condition and the use of cannabis or processing cannabis or where you can get my books, thegrowboss.com. All right, let me take this call. Okay, you have to turn your TV, you have to turn your stuff off. Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay. Now let me try it. Hey, you're on with the Grow Boss. Hi, how are you? Hi, good morning. What can I do for you? Um, We're doing our first grow. And we wanted your advice to see uh, what we're doing well and what we should be doing better. Okay. So, have you started growing already? Yeah. We're on day, what day are we on? 10? We're on day 10. Oh. And we started from a clone. Okay. Uh, we have a 4x4 four four tent. And we have, a, what is it, a... A 10 bulb, 12 bulb. We have a 10 bulb T5. Um, probably an 8 or a 12. I haven't seen a 10 bulb before. 12. Okay. How many points? And we're in soil. Okay. So we have one, I think it's a one gallon pot. We're in soil. We use uh, Fox Farms Ocean Forest. I'm listening. You are right on track. You are giving me all the information I'm going to have to ask for. Keep going. All right. So we started with uh, how many plants? Two hundred watts. How many plants? How many plants? One. So we did one clone. We figured we'd start there and and go from there. Okay. But we're actually thinking about getting like two or three more since we do have the four by four tent. Okay. Um. Let's see. So we're in California, totally legal, um, not a problem there. We went to the, the dispensary to get the clone, so that was easy. Um, so we have 200 watts on right now, but 
the question we are running into is how far away our light should be. And we keep moving it back and forth, trying to trying to decide. Um, and then we're trying not to water too much. So I think we've watered. We watered when we transplanted from the little uh, clone square to the one gallon pot, and then we watered six days ago. Okay. So one light rotation, four by four tent, twelve bulb T five, one plant. Okay. Yeah. And we have a fan in there, but it's just like a, a room fan. Smooth the air. Okay, so whenever deciding where to put your light, you always need to consider how much plant that light can grow. So if an eight bulb can grow two by four, about two feet deep, then a four bulb, which is 200 watts, can grow two by four, one foot deep. Then a two bulb, can grow one by four, one deep. See what I'm saying? So if two bulbs can grow yeah. four by one, four feet long by one foot deep, then that light would probably be about one foot away from those plants. And that would look like, that would look like, I need my mouse, which is right here. Okay, perfect. That would look like this picture, okay. So see in this picture here, again, the lights are about eight, 10 inches over the plants. There's 10 plants and they're sort of at their capacity because this is at the end of the week. So these plants are at their capacity for this light. In this case, um, that's, that's sort of what you're shooting for. I'll make this observation for you. Rather than when you have when you have when you have one light rotation and that's the reason I put that first in the list when you have a one light rotation the thing to consider is always if you do a four week veg and an eight week flower you're going to wait for 12 weeks so the question is can you shorten yeah. veg because you can't shorten flower if you can't shorten flower then if you can't shorten flower the only thing left to affect is veg the only way to affect veg is more plants veg for a shorter amount of time. So if you're looking for a shorter veg and a, and a shorter time to harvest, that's exactly what you want for uh, more plants, especially when you're somewhere legal. Like you've got this one little plant under all this light in the middle of your tent. And so yeah, that's, that's right. it's sad. Oh, there's so much room for, so <laughs> let me show you this picture um in paint let me open up this and let me offer you a different suggestion i would suggest that you do more plants now here's a picture where there's one plant in every hole basically this guy gets one gallon buckets plants a clone veggies for one week and then flowers Yeah, the thing we're running into is our clone had, I think, like three or four nodes on it. So we already have, I think, 10 tops. Okay, but here's the thing. Even it's like Here, here's the thing. You have a 12, 12 you have a twelve bulb light. A 12 bulb light is 600 watts. A 600 watt, if you look at this picture, see the area that says four by four? You have to fill up your four by four tent. When you start flowering, you're going to finish veg with a 400 watt light. You're going to finish flowering with a 600 watt now technically what i mean is you're going to finish veg with eight bulbs you're going to go into flower four weeks later you'll have all 12 bulbs on and you'll finish flowering with 12 bulbs now 12 bulbs is 600 watts 600 watts is a pound dry or three pounds wet if you want to grow three pounds wet you have to grow a four by four space two feet deep full of bud to get that you have to start flower with a one foot top in every square on the trellis. So look at your plant with your 10 tops and a four by four, there's two squares per, per linear foot, four squares per square foot. A four by four is 16 square feet. That's 64 tops. So you're more than welcome to veg 
one big plant and you are going to have to bed your big plant because you need 64 one foot tall tops now that's going to be a 10 week veg you are literally going to have to grow a yeah. plant like this you are literally going to have to grow plants like this and you have a t5 a t5s don't have the same kind of penetration so rather than grow yeah. one giant plant how about if we do since you're in california how about if you just go buy 40 clones put them all in one gallon buckets veg them for seven days and then flower them and be done in nine weeks how's that yeah yeah okay so you spend a little more on the clones you're going to have more than enough clones for the second round but the problem that you're going to run into with the second round is always when you're done with a one light rotation and you're somewhere where it's legal so you can go get lots of clones the temptation is always to have more plants you do more plants veg for a short amount of time and then flower so you get that yield in in nine weeks instead you know in nine weeks instead of 12 weeks but the question is next round are you prepared to go and buy uh, there's 64 more clones if you're not then you have to do a veg so this is a very important lesson that i'm about to give you you have a 600 watt light a 600 watt light is good for about a pound every 60 days a thousand watt light is good for sorry let me take a step back a thousand watt light is good for a pound and a half if you have one 1000 watt light you'll veg for 30 10 plants 30 days flower for 60 and at the end of 90 days you'll get a pound and a half a pound and a half averages out to a half pound a month now if you have a 400 watt veg and a 600 watt flower that's still a thousand watts worth of light but because you have a two light rotation where you have a one light rotation you're going to get a pound every 60 days why because you veg and flower at the same time so as soon as you're done flowering you go over to the veg tent take your plants out put them in flower take your clones start them in veg and now you get a harvest every 60 days instead of every 90. however a four 600 watt is the same as one 1000. i don't care if you get a pound every 60 days or a pound and a half every 90 days it doesn't matter if you do a one light rotation or a two light rotation a thousand watts worth of electricity is a pound and a half 600 watts worth of electricity is a pound 400 watts worth of electricity is a half pound the frequency with which you get that yield determined is dependent on your rotation if you have a one light rotation you get that yield every 90 days if you have a two light rotation you get that yield every 60 days and if you have a three light rotation you get that yield every 30 days and it's the same i don't care if you do one 1000 a four 600 or three 400s yield equals yield electricity equals yield don't care what light you have but in your case let's say you have 600 watts in flower let's just pretend that they were you had a four bulb and an eight bulb you could do the same thing take the four bulbs out of flower move them into veg and now you're going to do a two light rotation with a four six with a 200 400 combo for the same electricity and i'm I, i'm not suggesting that you do this i just want you to be aware of it so you you can make the intelligent decision while you do this so one two three light rotation because electricity is electricity and yield is based on light and so in this video I specifically go over oh there's the pictures oh, okay <clears throat> so in this picture oh, but don't show them they have our faces in them so he doesn't want the ones with our faces in them i don't what picture no no this is a video on okay let me stop because i don't want to put your face on it how could i possibly have um how could i possibly have a picture with you in it oh he just emailed you the picture oh okay i'm on youtube not in the email okay so so this is a video where on right now what you're seeing is um let's see this is a one light rotation we go over the one light rotation and i show you a two light rotation where veg is smaller than flower veg has a four bulb and flower has an eight bulb in it and then we go over a three light rotation and um 
So we do a three light rotation as well in this video. So I just want you to see that you can use the same electricity in different ways at different times of the day with different results, all to determine your yield. So you have 12 bulbs in flower. I mean, you have 12 bulbs in flower, but you don't have any veg. So I'm just suggesting that there's this relationship between light and yield and that you you can be aware that you can do it you can handle this in different ways for instance you have 12 bulbs in flower right now great think about it as a bulb a week you line five plants up right under there you've got 12 bulbs that means four week veg eight week flower so you put five plants right under there then you turn on two bulbs well you would have two bulbs a little further away then the plants would grow into it then you would turn on four bulbs pull the plants apart a little bit over the next weeks they'd grow into it then you'd start flowering you would turn on more bulbs and more bulbs because you can't turn on all the bulbs until the end that's not how this works the plants have to be big enough so in your particular case what I'm thinking is you would do if you know you're going to do five plants under the t5s because they're four feet long you know these t5s are four feet long so you line up five plants under you line up five plants under your light and in this case this is a five week veg so a four week veg this is end of week four so if it's a bulb a week and there's five plants under one bulb then you would just go get like 20 plants and veg them for two weeks or you could get 40 plants and veg them for one week or you could get 64 plants and just put one in each square this time then what you can do is go buy yourself an eight bulb veg if you like doing this because you would grow 400 watts flower 600 watts perfect you would go from veg at 400 and now not only can you use your flower bulb for flowering but you can go ahead and buy a veg bulb and now you don't need to go buy 64 clones but once you switch from once you add so right now you have a 12 bulb but once you add an eight bulb now suddenly you have a two light rotation and you're getting a harvest every 60 days instead of every 90 days so in your case if you add a yeah. 400 watt veg for 400 watts your harvest would be decreased by 30 percent well decrease in time or an increase of 50 percent technically you would get uh nope it would you won't Let's see, you get a harvest every three months. So from two to three is a 50% increase in time or a 30 or a 33% reduction, depending on which way you look at it. But now that you know you have a 400 watt veg and you're on a two light rotation, you would never do 64 plants again. Why? Because you've got eight weeks worth of veg and no longer would you be, no longer would you be doing this you would have an eight week veg, you would be something closer to this. Well, maybe not that big, but you know if you have an eight week flower, you're gonna have an eight week veg, or even if you have a four week veg, because- So you had so, take bigger plants. Yes, um, but I think perhaps more importantly, what I'm suggesting is if you have if you know that you have eight weeks until the flower tent is done, it sets the rotation in a two light, it sets the pace in a two light rotation. Let's say you have eight plants. If they're growing fast, when you go into flower, you're gonna take the clone and you're gonna root them for three weeks and then veg them for five. But let's say they're, that's a fast plant, but let's say you have a slow plant. You can be two weeks before you go into flower, you're gonna go into veg, take your cuttings. That way, when you go into flower, you already have 10 weeks instead of eight worth of veg. And you might only have to do eight plants, even though they're slower, you might take them sooner. What I'm suggesting is that even though flower takes the, sets the pace of a two light rotation, in, in, in a three light rotation, veg is its entirely own engine because both lights require um, their own thing so it has to feed both tents but in a two light rotation you've got eight weeks until the flower tent is done so in this case you've got eight weeks minimum because you're not going to take your cuttings two weeks into flower however you could take your cuttings four weeks before they go into flower halfway through flower you take cuttings and you put them in the veg tent so you could have a 12 week veg there's a lot of wiggle room when you do a two light rotation because you have such a long veg time 
So when we go from veg to flour, do we need to change the bulbs? Because right now we just have blue bulbs. Do we need to buy red bulbs for flour? Um, okay, I will show you. Ha <laughs> ha. I always think that's a funny question because I have this video from one of my customers called T5 Haters Say What? Let's take a look at this. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look at T5 Haters Say What? And boom, look at this motherfucker's plants. Look at this guy. He has got it three. Is the guy at the grow shop locally told us he couldn't grow with a T5. He was like, you're wasting your time. You have to get a different bulb. And we were like, no, nah, I, I think we're okay. Okay, what I would like to suggest is if you're as good as this guy, like, see this tall top right here? I think he would have had a much better benefit if he had topped that middle out of those plants and kept the canopy more even. Now, that said, he has two plants under each light. I mean, this guy kills it. He has two plants under each light. Let me, there we go. Two plants. Now, this top here clearly got away. And one of the things that I show you in my book is this. The problem is the light has to be as far away from this. See how far away it is from the canopy? This is the appropriate amount. So this is getting burnt. And if it's not getting burnt, it's because, well, they're T5s. They spread the light out over a lot area. So T5s give you a lot of wiggle room. But I always want, I bring this video up specifically to show you. These are blue bulbs. So... Could you do better with red? So we just have to change the the hours versus the, the bulbs themselves. Go to a twelve twelve versus an eighteen six. You grasp and that'll flower them, regardless you, red bulbs or not. Yes, you grasped that I that concept very quickly. Because I usually have to argue with dudes and tell them, No, 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 this isn't about what you think it is. Now, could that crop have been better with a red bulb? Possibly. I will tell you that when I look at the red bulbs and I look at blue bulbs, the red bulbs are clearly not as bright. Now, could four red bulbs and four blue bulbs be the best possible? It could be six and two. All I know is that those are some really good looking plants. That's all I'm suggesting. And if you were to fight the red our first grow we stick with the blue bulbs and then when we go to do a two light rotation we go to buy another fixture we buy it with red bulbs and then we can do the flower with half and half but the first grow it's not going to make a big difference well I i'll tell you if the first grow is absolutely fantastic and you did the best you could possibly do it might make a difference but how much difference how much difference you've never looked at a bud and this is a point uh, this is a point of contention i always make with you guys have you ever looked at a bud and said oh my god it was grown with a t5 or an hid or an led or an mh or a blue or a red spectrum or an led or a cmh or a <laughs> de i've never in 35 yeah 35 years wow damn it gets away from you i've never in 35 years, looked at a bud. Now, I've said this is some pretty shitty border weed, but I've never looked at a bud and said, oh my God, you harvested this early. Oh my God, you grew with a nutrient that I hate. Oh my God, you grew in hydro, outdoors. You, you can't tell a damn thing about a bud. Here's a whole bunch of bud. Like literally, here's a whole bunch of, it's not even a whole bunch of bud. It's actually a little bit of bud that's the last of the bud that I got from the Bushmaster. But... No, five minutes. That's got a customer at the store. That's funny. So that's a bud. Can you tell anything about it? Like, I, I question, like, how much value. So here's another thing. You don't know where your milk comes from. You know, milk may be organic or whatever, but they take all the cows and they put them in a silo. And then somebody stands under there and puts the jug under there and presses the one gallon button and fills up the one gallon jug, puts the top on, puts it on the conveyor belt, goes to your store. You don't know where it comes from? You didn't. Oh my God, I can tell this cow was grown with, but I don't even know what cows grow with. So, ha, city boy. So my point is you can't tell a damn thing about it. You don't know about your milk. You don't know about your gas. You don't know about anything. It's homogenous. And if they blast it and make wax out of it, then 
you, you run into the same thing. How do you know where the wax comes from? 100%, it's 80%, it's this, it's that. How could you possibly know anything about the final product? Unless, and I ask everybody this in honest sincerity, can you tell me one defining characteristic that would, that would make me say one bud is, oh, it's LED, this nutrient, that nutrient, this light. Even if it was wispy, you might say it was a haze. I mean, it might not even be too much plant, not enough light. It might not have even been grown poorly. I mean, when you smoke it, you can tell the light's too close. You can smell the burn. You can look at it. But there really isn't anything to tell you the T5 light was too close or the 1,000-watt light or the HID or the CMH or the DE or the LED. Blah, 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 blah. You can't know anything about it. Do you have any defining characteristic? No, there's no way. Right. So that should answer... So as soon as somebody tells you anything about anything, the reality is it's like anything else. You look at NASCAR, all the cars are the same. What's the difference? The talent. And I do have to open my hydro store. So in this particular case, I'm going to end this. Okay, so I'll go ahead and send you something for that. However, I'm gonna go ahead and end this call. And we're gonna I'm gonna have to end the show on the grow boss I have a customer at the door this is cannabis hotline I'll do it again tomorrow if you know what was up with Thanks, that bye if you know what was up with the uh, answer to this thing just go ahead and send me an email the grow boss at yahoo.com and if there's anything else I can do for you you can always sign up for a consult on the growboss.com but I got to go deal with customers now same thing as yesterday. It's always the same damn thing. Tomorrow, I hope my show is going to be 100%. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye.